When we think of the media, we think of reporters as storytellers. The outsider perspective, watching from the sidelines. Always the chismosa, never the chismis. But what happens when the reporters themselves get tangled up in the story? And what if the story was a brutal, highly violent tale of hostage and mass murder? Is it still right for the media to step in and play an active part as the tale unfolds? Welcome to the Dead Air Podcast, where buried stories of media go live. In today's podcast episode, discover how the media coverage of a 2010 hostage crisis led to drastic changes in broadcast codes. Around 9.30 a.m. on August 23, 2010, dismissed police senior inspector Rolando Mendoza took hostage of a bus carrying 21 Hong Kong tourists and four Filipino guides at the Quirino Grandstand in the Neta Park. Mendoza was just removed from service after being incriminated in cases of extortion and drug-related crimes. In an attempt to demand his job back, he engaged in negotiations with police at the hostage scene, armed with a handgun and M16 rifle. However, these talks failed when Mendoza witnessed his brother being arrested on live television. Soon after that, the shooting commenced. Pero teka teka! Paano nga ba nag-lead papunta sa mga events na to? Good question! Ganito kasi yan, partner, no? Earlier on, the media already established contact with Mendoza through RMN DZXL. The network's chief reporter at the time, na si Erwin Tulfo, interviewed Mendoza while the police were negotiating with him. Many have criticized Tulfo for complaining to Mendoza that the police prevented the interview. People questioned whether this might have played a role in Mendoza's distrust towards the police. Major news networks such as ABS-CBN, GMA, and TV5 also covered the 11-hour hostage crisis non-stop even at the expense of their primetime shows. They made sure to broadcast every possible detail of the situation. And at around 2 p.m., they even reported police movement and their positions which allowed Mendoza, on the other hand, to determine the location of the snipers since he had access to a TV inside the bus. Hmm, talagang mainit-init ang mga pangyayari, partner. Kamusta ka dyan? Kinakaya mo pa ba? Kaya naman, wag na nating patagalin pa. Go, partner! Ituloy mo na yan. Totoo yan, partner. Nakakastress ang sitwasyon. Pero alam mo bang, hindi pa nagtatapos dyan? At 6.45 p.m., during an interview with RMN DZXL, a news anchor named Michael Rogas kept asking Mendoza for his final decision while the SWAT team surrounded the bus. According to the IIRC, the question of the anchor might have pressured Mendoza to take action. Mendoza then declared that he would kill the passengers if the SWAT team did not leave. Later on, Mendoza's brother, Gregorio, tried to negotiate with him by asking him to surrender peacefully. But Gregorio was arrested on live TV as he was carrying a gun in the exclusion zone and didn't have police approval to assist in the negotiations. Yun na nga lang ang natatanging malapit na koneksyon kay Mendoza. Tapos, nawala pa. Ano kaya ang naging reaksyon niya? May details ka ba dyan, partner? So ito na nga partner, tulad ng mga pangyayari, nag-init ang ulo ni Mendoza. Many noted that the media's report on Gregorio's arrest was the turning point of the crisis. Mendoza was angered by the situation. And while being interviewed on RMN DZXL, Mendoza threatened to shoot at the hostages if the police didn't free his brother. Nakita niya kasi na isinakay sa mobile ang nakababatang kapatid na si SPO1, Gregorio Mendoza. Ginaganyan niya niya yung mga kapatid ko. Wala na makinalaman niyan. Eto pag hindi nila binago yan, tutuloyan ko na yung mga dito na sa loob. Tutuloyan ko na to. Kaagad hiningi ni Mendoza pakawala ng kanyang kapatid sa loob ng limang minuto. Kung hindi, nagbanta siyang iisa-isahing patayin ang mga hostage. 
Minutes later, gunshots were heard. Pero ang limang minutong palugit ni Mendoza para pakawalan ng kanyang kapatid, naging tatlong minuto na lang at ito ang naging resulta. When the dust cleared after 90 minutes of shooting, Mendoza and eight hostages have been killed, while several others were injured. As viewers, talaga namang mapapatanong tayo, what went wrong, partner? By choosing to report Gregorio's arrest, did the media take the gun from Mendoza's hands and shoot the hostages themselves? Did the media network think about the consequences of their actions or did they forget their responsibilities after realizing that they could capitalize on the situation? Mas mahalaga ba ang ratings kaysa buhay ng tao? Alam mo, for sure! Yan ang tumatakbo sa utak ng ilan sa ating madlang people habang napapanood ang sitwasyon. Pero bago yan, partner, pakinggan muna natin ang panig ng mga media persons na involved sa kasong ito. In an open inquiry on the case, reporter Erwin Tulfo stated, The problem is, we are all chasing ratings. Exclusivity. My colleagues may not admit it, but that was the main thing. Getting an exclusive report. At nakuha nga nila ang exclusive report na hinahanap nila. In fact, RMN Network even labeled their coverage of the crisis as an RMN exclusive. At with an exclamation point pa yan, ha? Tulfo's statement can also explain many of the media's decisions. Some of their practices compromised police operations and revealed sensitive information. For example, GMA's camera was positioned to reveal the perspective of the PNP sniper. The interview with the perpetrator interfered with police negotiations, and some of the live commentaries revealed the activities of the policemen as they approached the scene. In response to this, ABS-CBN claimed that they took reasonable measures to follow police directives and ensure that sensitive footage was not aired. However, the sad part here, partner, is that rather than taking accountability, they instead place the blame solely on the police, claiming that the rescue team was unprepared, undertrained, and lacking in proper equipment. Maria Ressa, on behalf of the station, even argued that had they stopped the coverage, they would have been criticized by the viewers or what the viewers would have done switch stations. Dagdag pa rito, the networks also argued that the KBP was imposing a limit on press freedom and enforcing censorship on the coverage that was only meant to update the public. But for KBP Standards Authority Chairperson Diana C. Gozum, You know, press freedom is not absolute. There are limitations to that and they must, as members of KBP, they must really be aware that we have provisions and that must be complied with. Life is so important. We cannot sacrifice lives for press freedom. And in that particular situation, the Standards Authority felt that our members went beyond uh, the responsibilities as broadcasters and also beyond the responsibility of getting a scoop for the network. Time spent on the interview could have been used for more police negotiations. And if the media didn't live air the footage of Mendoza's brother getting arrested, then Mendoza would not have been provoked to commence the shooting. Broadcast ethics were gravely violated for the sake of sensationalizing a story in the eyes of the public, all while these networks competed for who could cover it better. The reality of the situation is that hostage and other crisis incidents are incredibly volatile. Proper ethics must still be observed and not disregarded in the name of covering all sides and angles. Media must still be held accountable if their practices aggravate situations like these. At ngayong nasa usapang broadcast ethics na tayo, partner, meron bang consequence na hinarap yung mga media networks na nabanggit kanina? At sino ang nagpapataw nito? Magandang tanong yan, partner. Yes. 
Lingid sa kaalaman ng karamihan ay mayroon tayong tinatawag na kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. Ito ay isang organisasyon na may layuning pangalagaan ang malayang pamamahayag at may tungkuling pangasiwaan ang mga tuntuning binuo upang mapanatili ang etikal na patayan at profesionalismo sa industriya ng broadcasting sa ating bansa. At para nga mabigyang solusyon ang naturang issue, the KBP issued a censure on ABS-CBN and TV5 for violating the conduct codes by airing police movements. They were not able to censure Jim A because the network had previously pulled out their membership from the KBP in 2003 due to a disagreement over commercial loading limits. This also raised an important issue. If there are no regulatory bodies to oversee a private media network, what is stopping them from repeating the same mistakes? The KBP also fined RMN DZXL for 30,000 pesos for interfering with the situation. RMN anchor Michael Rogas was also fined 15,000 pesos and chief reporter Erwin Tulfo was fined 10,000 pesos for their misconduct. Ato na ba lahat, partner, o may nakalimutan pa ba ako? Meron pa, partner. Nakakalimutan ata natin ang pinakamahalagang bahagi ng kwentong ito dahil hindi lang ito nagtapos sa pagpipinalize sa mga network. Sa katunayan, ang krisis na ito ang nag-udyok sa isa sa pinakamalaking pagbabago sa kasaysayan ng batas pang media sa Pilipinas. To ensure that this kind of situation would not happen again, the KBP amended Article 6 of the KBP Broadcast Code that deals with the coverage of crime and crisis situations. Among these amendments include a section stating that the right to life takes precedence over the right to information. Stations are encouraged to consider delayed airing of its live footage. Broadcasters should assume that the perpetrator has access to all broadcasts. Broadcasters may not communicate with perpetrators or victims without coordination with police. Members must be mindful to preserve evidence at a crime scene. Broadcasters must be careful not to provoke the perpetrator or interfere with negotiations. While these modifications demand a sense of accountability from the top to the bottom of the broadcasting chain, it is worth noting that only members of the KBP would be penalized for violating these rules. As such, non-KBP members, like GMA, are free from liability. Let's not forget that broadcast media is an industry that thrives on ratings and revenue. Even with these regulations in place, The media cannot resist a good story because a good story means good money. Almost eight years after the events of the Manila hostage crisis, the media once again proved that when it comes down to choosing between ratings and human lives, it is in their instincts and best interests to always choose ratings. Teka partner, totoo bang naulit na naman ang pagkakamali ng nakaraan? Share naman dyan oh. Hi partner, true. Paulit-ulit na lang nakakasawa na. Biro lang. <laughs> On April 12, 2018, the Quezon City Police District held a terror attack simulation in Cubao. Before the media were allowed to cover the drill, they were informed of the proceedings. That didn't stop some cameramen and photographers from leaving their designated spots on the sidelines to closely cover the dramatized hostage negotiation. Mabuti na lang at fake lamang ang sitwasyon. Because if the terror attack wasn't just a simulation, the media personnel would already be shot dead while also compromising the police operation. All for a good story. These events highlight the flaws of Philippine broadcast media. Broadcast codes can only prevent harm if practitioners themselves respect and follow the rules. But because contradictions exist between media's responsibilities towards their institutions and their duty towards the public, broadcast media will always be divided. Maria Reza said, When there are no rules, we push for what we can get. This statement reflects the very reason 
as to why broadcast codes should be continuously revisited and re-evaluated, especially with the ever-changing climate of media, technology, and surveillance. Press freedom should not come at the expense of lives, in the same way that cautiousness should not diminish the quality of truth-telling. Thank you so much for listening to our pilot episode, Crisis Coverage Code. Make sure to follow our Instagram page that is at deadairph. Let us know what you'd like to hear next. Palaging tandaan na maging kritikal na kalahok sa kasaysayan ng media. Ikaw at ako, isip at diwa tungo sa mediang malaya at mapagpalaya. Once again, this is the Dead Air Podcast. Where buried stories of media go live.